Check out part 1 of the series if you haven't yet and want to know more about how this all works behind the scenes, the setup, the tests and the data collection done so far. So quick recap, we've looked at multiple data sources, collected what we could and tested with a preliminary out of the box model and gotten some okay results. But we can do better, right? One thing that is brought up a lot in comments everywhere is okay but there are a lot of important factors that affect the prices of items in the ORSRS Grand Exchange like time of day, bots, the volume of items traded, bots, finance features that they use in stocks and like what about them bots. As it turns out, this is a useful and well-studied field of machine learning that is essential to most if not all great machine learning models. Let's start with a small example, specifically with a time series data set. Say we want to predict if this wise old man wants to eat a cooked chicken. Next, we have a few factors that help us know whether he wants to eat a chicken. Let's look back 6 to like 24 hours in the past and let's see how much food he's eaten since then. Maybe he snacked a little bit here and there or on the way to this current point. We can check out also how much he's exerted himself in the last few hours. The more energy you use, the more you likely you want to replenish. And lastly, let's look at the time of day. If it's a usual time to eat, then we can safely say he's about to eat again. Finding these features can be really useful to add into our equation to finally decide on if he's going to eat a chicken. A lot of these things like time of day and maybe different statistical techniques can be used easily for a wide variety of models and use cases, but the real, truly useful features come from a significant domain knowledge in whatever the problem may be. For example, knowing how a human craves food, imagine adding the feature, when was the last time he's had cooked chicken? If it was never, he's definitely not likely to start now. And if it was too soon in the past, he's also probably not going to go for it now because, let's face it, only a psychopath is going to want to eat the same thing twice. Well then I guess we also have to know if he's even a normal human to begin with. As promised, I read till chapter 8 of my little sheet book on time series analysis, which is the chapter on feature engineering. So it's more studying than I've ever done at college and I have a much better idea now of what are the best ways to extract and select features and that's what I'll try to convey to you today. Let's look at our own use case right now. I'm going to split this section into two. We'll, spend, we'll speed through the more boring statistical techniques and then talk about the domain specific ones that require at least a little bit of knowledge about RuneScape or finance in general. So what are the different kinds of st st oh, shit. statistical techniques? As suggested in my sheet book, I tried out some open source feature generation libraries to try and automatically find features like a lazy sack of potatoes. The library suggested was called TSFresh, which extracted a whole bunch of different statistical... Uh, I'm gonna have... <laughs> I'm gonna struggle with this word all today, so be... Uh, be kind. Statistical features like the aggregated correlation, approximate entropy, or change quantiles among different parts of the time series data. It also has a useful function to test them all and then narrow them down to the best performers. However, I found that the result did worse than the baseline test that they had, so I didn't include it in my final chunk of code. Other than that, there were some simpler ones that were suggested, me, suggested to me by uh, Argenta in my Discord family and a few others. It was the differentiated signal, which is essentially the slope of the curve at any given point. That's right, high school math. Other than that, we also have the usual date time aggregations like day of the week or hour of day. They are used a lot for time series data analysis because people do all sorts of things differently depending on what time it is. And that, you know, that includes RuneScape. Now, to the more domain specific stuff, I tried out some well-known features for finance to predict the stock market prices. Once again, terms that you know sound a little scary, like MACD or moving average convergence divergence, and RSI or relative strength index. However, I think that these deserve a little more detail than what we automatically generated. We should all learn that these complex sounding algorithms come from a person's intuition and if we look at it correctly, we'll see that it's essentially common sense with more numbers. Plus, it's going to help us earn some of that GP. So for the MACD, it takes two exponential moving averages, which are just the averages over different periods of time. 
One is slow, which usually looks back over 12 periods, and another is fast, looking back at, you know, 26 periods. So what we do is we take the differences between these averages to determine if the market is swinging upwards or if it's hitting down. It is used to determine the momentum of a particular stock. In a similar way, the RSI just determines if a stock is oversold or overbought. It calculates the average gains and losses over the period of time, and usually if it's over the value of 70, it's overbought, and it will drop soon, and if it's under 30, it's underbought and will rise again. Other than these two features were the prices and trading quantities of other in-game items. I tried out some items like other weapons or even rune armor because maybe they bought, maybe they'd be bought together. In retrospect, I don't think this is a very you know good idea because I don't think there are enough people who just come over and buy a whole set of you know rune items just for fun. So I'll take a look into different items that have a greater co connection or correlation with their prices and volume traded. A lot of people so far have mentioned like potions or ores or runes that all are correlated with each other in some manner. Okay, not gonna lie, this was the most depressing point in the series so far for me. After I added all the different types of features, I tested the model and it was still just as bad as it was originally. At first I was hopeful when I started with feature selection techniques to dwindle down the number of features. I used two well-known techniques like regression f-tests to see what features are most likely to represent the predicted items. I used recursive feature elimination to see what combination of features would be best by recursively going through all combinations and selecting the best few that were working well together. When both of those didn't seem to do much, I just tried each one individually with the code above to see what had the most impact overall. This is when I spent over a week going down a little bit of a spiral, trying different things to make it work better. I first tried different configurations of the LSTM model. I didn't want to do too much yet as I wanted to have hyperparameter tuning be the next exploratory part of the series. So I just tried to add a few regularization areas like Dropout or L1, L2 to try and reduce the overfitting. I tried making the model more complex with a little more layers or hidden units. I tried to make it simpler with less layers or units and even tried swapping out the complex LSTM model for simple RNNs or GRUs. Nothing really worked as I had planned but I think these things happen and I may be a little bit out of my league at the moment and I reached a configuration that works slightly better than it was previously. The validation loss wasn't skyrocketing anymore and the predictions at least looked like they were predicting the right general direction. So this is where I'm calling out to experts for help. I'm going to post all over Reddit, Facebook and Discord to see if anyone knows what would be the best next steps uh, for me to take. And I answer almost immediately so if you have any ideas please let me know down below or wherever you saw this posted. I will also be continuing to read my little sheet book because I know I will get into deep learning and hyperparameter tuning as well, so maybe it'll provide some tips and hints. My best guess is that everything will get better with hyperparameter tuning, especially now that I have the features in place, but I'm always open to suggestions. After my depressing little spiral, I decided to see if this was all even worth pursuing. I looked at what we had so far, which was the predictive model, looking a few time steps into the future. I thought about how I'd use it in the very most basic way. I thought alright, I'll just buy it at the lowest point and sell it at the highest point to make the most expected profit. Remember this little bit of code because that's what we're going to be expanding on for this little experiment. We usually plot the x values which is our input historical data, the y values which is the true future, and the predictions derived from the x values which is our predicted future. We take those same variables and essentially unscale or normalize that data. I made a small function just to do that. And remember when we scaled the variables so that the largeness of each would not affect the priority of another? Well, we do the exact opposite to get the real prices in GP. Other than that, I save the high value, low value and their respective indexes to reference later. Once we have those values saved, we can derive how much profit we actually make if we bought 100 rune schemes for example at our lowest predicted point and sold at our highest predicted point. We can also see the amount of error at each predicted point and see if it's something we're okay with at this moment. Here we have one example in our testing data set. We see that it's usually off by around 100 GP and the real profit we would have gotten is 22,000. But I could have been lucky here because uh, we sold it at quite a good place and bought it at the best possible spot. Looking at a few other examples, the average error is usually around 50 GP. The real profits show that there are some negatives but overall 
we come up to a profit of 92,500, which isn't much, but like I said, it's definitely a dumb way to use his predictions. It's currently only looking 5 time steps ahead and saying it'll buy or sell within that time. But no one's to say you can't do that every time step and truly wait for the greatest time or even better. With human intervention, the decisions you make could be much more profitable than these with automated judgments. All in all, I was it was kind of consoling knowing that we're close, right? We're close to being able to completely apply this and make some serious money, especially if we use these predictions in a smarter way and with more GP to invest in the first place. But yes, if you feel like you have a better intuition than I do about how to use these predictions, please let me know. I'm sure even a child could think of a better way to use it than I am. And that's everything for this video, folks. Um, just to conclude, that was a terrible automated bot. Imagine what we could do if we were smarter about how we use these predictions. Taking a longer time frame and seeing patterns or even just observing the pattern swings. We also haven't looked into predicting the prices of other items and comparing them to see what we get the most profit out of. And also, you know, the different kinds of items that could be related to each other. So possible improvements for the future, definitely hyperparameter tuning and trying on, uh, trying it on a lot of different items. It's also entirely possible that we just don't have enough data for such a complex model or any of the models previously mentioned. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm definitely looking for suggestions, so please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you, and see you next time.